Hey everyone, Mega Seven Roll here. How are we doing today? We got our legendary hero. It is Ephraim. Holy crap! Did not expect this whatsoever. There he is. I've already watched the video. Um, since you guys said you didn't really, really like me following along with the video and pausing, um, so I'm just gonna talk about it now. Uh, I'm shocked. I, I was wrong in so many different ways. I don't know what to think anymore. I mean, I guess it was pretty obvious. Um, looking back at it now, uh, we we knew it was going to be a blue legendary. We knew. Um, we were absolutely going to get a blue legendary just because uh, Fjorm is missing. So Fjorm is missing, who else are they going to replace it with? It's got to be blue. Um, from there on, you can only kind of guess. So it should have made sense. I thought I should have thought blue legendary, of course, um, Ephraim. Who else would it be, you know? Uh, the one thing I am surprised about is that it's another Lance. I think that's what threw me off. I expected it not to be another Lance. Um, getting another Lance kind of confuses me since that's two blue Lances we now have as legendary. Holy crap, as you can see as well, we have the banner behind us here, and I was wrong about another one, um, and that is this Corrin. I thought for sure Corrin was not going to be on this banner just because uh, people are going to be summoning blue, and I feel like Corrin is one of those units that grabs people into summon that color. Uh, so I thought they wanted to save Corrin until another day when we had a less enticing new blue unit. Uh, maybe when it was with Fjorm again, just because uh, people already have Fjorm, they don't really want to summon for her, uh, and blue makes them summon. So let's take a look at his skills first off. Holy crap, by the way, I'm shocked. Can't believe it. We have Flame Sigmund, which is amazing. It grants plus three attack um, with 16 might already. And if the number of foes within two spaces, excluding the target, um, more than the number of allies within two spaces, excluding the unit, uh, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. I don't know why they excluded, because they could have just um, left off the excluding target and excluding unit part. It would be shorter and it would be the exact same thing, right? I'm not, I'm not missing anything there. Um, guaranteed follow attack, which is awesome. Uh, super stoked to see what his stats are like, and I love his I love his kit. I love what he's built for. I love everything about it. Um, he also comes with Saul. I'm kind of disappointed it's not noontime. Everybody loves a good noontime. Comes with Sturdy Stance, which is not my favorite build, and I, I feel like I'm going to be changing that as well, but it does fit his uh, theme, and his theme is get the hell in there, hit some stuff, get healed to full, and hit the rest of the stuff too, no problem. Um, I feel like maybe giving them Gale Force or something would do something, but that doesn't make any sense. Restores 30% of damage dealt when special figures. Okay, uh, it, it would still trigger on that, I, I think. Gale Force works with Solar Brace, right? Um, either way, the whole point of him seems to be get into a bunch of enemies by himself, do a ton of stuff, um, get healed to full, and then have fun and handle the rest of them, no problem. Uh, Solar Brace here. Really cool as well. Restores 30% of damage dealt when special triggers during combat. And Gale Force triggers during combat. It'll definitely work with that. And it also stacks. I like that it says it stacks as well. Of course it does because they come in the same kit. So that would just make no sense otherwise. Um, so he's healing 80% of his damage during combat um, from his special hit altogether, which is really cool. And then Fortify Defense, which is not the most exciting. I, I figured he would get some sort of tactic. He is. He's one of the most brilliant strategists I think we've come across in Fire Emblem so far in the games we've played in FE6, FE7, and FE8. Uh, I, I think he's one of the best. Him and Innes seem to, to be the standout strategists uh, in these games, so it makes not as much sense to me that he's just using plain old fortify uh, defense instead of like tactics or something like that. Anyway, let's take a look at the banner here and whether or not you should pull. Um, so the first thing we have here is Colorless. We have Jafar, we have Gaius, and we have... Olivia, I, I think this is a really forgettable uh, colorless banner, and I don't think you should touch colorless on here, um, unless you have a, a thing for Olivia. Unless you really, really, really want Olivia, I really don't think you should summon colorless here. Uh, Gaius is not the best unit, Jafar is not the best unit, and uh, PA Olivia is honestly not the best either. She's a dancer, um, and that's about it. She's probably the last dancer I go to. Uh, I'm pretty sure I use every single dancer over her before I get to her, so uh, I, d I definitely don't even use her on Arena Assault at times, so um, again, if you really want Olivia, go for it, but that's the only real reason I, I think you should touch Colorless for this point. We've also got Green here, and Green seems to be the standout. We've got Bike, which is insane, we've got Dorcas, which is insane, and we've got Gunthra, who's also insane. I love Gunthra, and I cannot wait to merge her all the way to plus 10, and this is a fantastic Green, especially if you need Either a Dorcas, a DC, uh, Infantry, or you want their um, Fierce Stance, or you want Bike Steady Breath. Just insane fodder under green, and I think it's one of the best colors uh, we've had for a Legendary Banner at this point. And we knew once we got Bike, it would be one of the best greens we get, so I'm really surprised they gave us Dorcas with that. Whew. 
As for red here, we have Vanguard Ike, we have Tomato Tome, and we have Mia. Uh, I think this is another skip. We're getting Vanguard Ike for free. Tomato Tome, Leo, is one of the worst units, I think. Uh, maybe he's good, but he's one of the only seasonals I, I don't use at this point. I think he's my least used seasonal, and I'm not a fan of him. I do like Leo himself, but he just never seems to turn out right, you know? There's just always better options. Then we have Mia, who is fantastic, and I do have it plus three now. We just summoned a uh, Pity Breaker Mia. I just don't think it's worth it again. Um, so this is another skip for me. I would definitely skip the red unless you have a strong affinity to one of these units, of course. And the good one. We have blue here. And we have Shiro, we have Corin, and we have uh, um, Ephraim. And this is one of the ones where it's fantastic. I think blue is going to be insane for this, and I'm really, really wanting to pull myself. But unfortunately, I already have two Corins with good IVs, and I don't want another Corin. Um, I would be okay with a Shiro, but I really just want Ephraim, and I'm kind of thinking I should wait just because I don't want to get Shiro or I don't want to get Corin. So um, as much as I want Ephraim, I do really like him, and I really, really enjoyed him in this game, and I feel like uh, I, I feel like I, I should be pulling for him since I played his game, and I do did love him so much. But at the same time, it's just so dangerous. There's there's basically one out of three I'm stoked about, and that's Ephraim. There's one out of three I'm half happy about, and that's Shiro, and there's one out of three that I'm kind of upset about, and that's Corrin, since I, I don't really want to pull for merges. Anyway, um, that's a legendary banner, and that's what I think. Uh, I am also slightly confused at the point, and I think a lot of people are kind of upset about this right now too, is that all of the CYLs are already getting a new thing. So it seems weird to, to do the CYL vote, and then all of a sudden release a bunch of the same things over and over again. Because we've got the Celica, we've got the Possessed Celica, we've got the Ephraim, we've got the CYL Ephraim, we've got so many things just being repeated over and over again, and it's really overloading, I think, is the word. I, I'm not entirely sure. Just too much of the same thing again. Um, but it is going to be really cool to get them in their different forms, and this means that we're not going to be getting this guy as the Brave CYL. And I think, again, the same with uh, the Possessed Sophia uh, Celica, the same thing with this one. We kind of expected um, Ephraim to be on a horse for a CYL, and apparently not. He's going to be a horse for a legendary hero, and it does make sense. Like, after playing his game, it 100% makes sense that he's going to be legendary on a horse because that's what he is in this game. So, um, holy crap. Uh, I I've been rambling a lot, so I'm just going to leave this as it is now, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to be summoning here. And uh, as always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of thing, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.